Sure. Welcome to 10 Grants in 10 Minutes with John Irwin. He's a government funding expert. John, why don't you give us a little bit about your background? Sure. Uh, I'm a software engineer, but I've got uh, 16 years of government funding under my belt. Shred, IRAP, all tax credits and grants. I worked at BDO, MNP, PwC, and uh, Deloitte. And so I've got a lot of experience working with small to large corporations across the board and with a success rate in the high 90s for most grants uh, and shred. And John is also the co-host with me of two podcasts, Future Tech Podcast and the Silicon Scoop Podcast. So if you're interested in technology that's breaking in the future that we're going to get in five to 10 years and new discoveries that are happening now, tune into Future Tech. If you're interested in what's happening today, concise things that you probably don't know that are happening, check out Silicon Scoop because we that's a daily podcast, Monday to Friday. They're you know six to eight minutes long. And we're, we take one subject, break it down that you probably aren't necessarily aware of. Yeah, it's a great time. We get some get into some debates, which is great fun. So uh, let's dive in. All right, dive in. Yeah. So um, we're gonna get into the grants, but I like to I like to kind of just go over a couple things just so everyone's on the same page. A bunch of funding options for your business for your business or your startup. Personal funds, they're high risk, require strict financial discipline, depends on personal status. And I'm going to go through these quickly as it's rapid fire. So if there's questions, I'll answer them at the end. Um, equity investment. So you give up ownership, you share dilution, increase number of stakeholders. Loans, tax credits, and grants is kind of what we're going to be talking about today. John, hang on a second. I stopped your share by accident. Can you share it again and start over? Sure. I apologize. No worries. People joining. <laughs> so... Loans, tax credits, and grants are typically what the government offers. When it comes to loans, if it's coming from the government, we're talking low interest to zero interest type loans. Uh, so uh, that's really good. Tax credits, there's no risk of losing equity or raising debt. Success is based on eligibility. And grants, there's no risk of losing equity, but success is based on timing and eligibility and who tells the best story. So tax credits versus grants. Uh, tax credits reduce your tax liability after the fact. Uh, uh, most are refundable if you're Canadian-owned private corporation uh, if you've met the program requirements. Grants, are they do provide upfront funding or as you go funding, but they're highly competitive and demand often exceeds available resources. It is quite a competitive process for grants, so grants typically go through a competitive selection process to choose the most promising applicants. Now, NRC funding, this is a hiring grant. Um, it is financial assistance, so the Youth Employment Program provides up to 50% of an intern's salary, up to $12,000 to offset the cost of hiring for R&D, engineering, multimedia, or market analysis projects. Interns must be between 15 and 30 years old, post-secondary graduates, Canadian citizens, or PRs, and first-time participants in the YEP. Employer eligibility must be small, medium-sized, for-profit businesses with 500 or fewer full-time employees and ready to enhance their innovation. So this is typically your first foray into IRAP through the NRC. Um, a lot of times because it's oversubscribed, they'll test you out with sort of this kind of grant and we'll get into IRAP in a second. My tax, this is a great, a great program to uh, hire a PhD, master's or postgrad student, uh, provide funding to support early stage startups to collaborate with academic researchers. This is specifically the Accelerate Entrepreneur. There's a bunch of different streams, but my tax is a, my tax is a great funding body to work with. They're eager to give you money. They're eager to help you succeed. So they're really, really good to work with. Um, so startups must be incorporated in Canada, have fewer than 50 employees, and have been in business for less than five years. We'll get into that eligibility stuff in a while. Uh, program offers up to 45000 in funding for four months of research projects with startups contributing 25% of the total project cost. Um, now, if you want to get training, for your employees. So you have employees, you wanna get training. Some of the great stuff right now is generative AI training or cybersecurity training. COGG is great. This is the Ontario job grant, but it's, it's the similar one for each province. Provides up to 10,000 per employee, up to a maximum of 130,000 per employer annually, excuse me, to support employee training. Training can cover a wide range of topics from technical skills to soft skills, must be delivered by an el eligible third-party trainer, which is very easy to, to do. Employers must be located in Toronto, have a valid WSIB account, and contribute at least 20% of the total training costs. So um, if you're under, I think it's 100 employees, it's 20%. If you're over uh, 100 employees, I think it's 50%. Uh, but I could be wrong at that threshold. I can't remember. They just changed the number. So 
Next is can export. So you have sales in Canada and you want to expand into other countries, into other areas. Can export provides up to fifty thousand dollars. You do not expect the fifty thousand. So total project costs of a hundred thousand. Typical what you can expect to get from can export is between twenty five to thirty seven approximately to cover attendance at trade shows. Uh, marketing expenses, SEO, um, ad buys, like Google AdWords, uh, IP protection, a whole bunch of different things. So um, the thing with Can Export, so all the other ones are ongoing so far. They're 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 rolling applications. Can Export used to be rolling applications. It now opens twice a year, approximately uh, once in May and then once again in September, October. So. This is a great one. It is a lot of work though. They used to give up to $100,000 and the work to put it together was worth it, but they haven't made it less onerous to do the work. So just be cognizant of that. It's a lot of work, a lot of upfront work. This is the NRCI wrap. So this is the one that, we're, that we talked about that is not a strictly hiring grant. This provides up to 75,000 for eligible salary costs. So those of you that know Shred, this is like the upfront for Shred. So. 75% for salary costs, 50% for subcontractor costs. Uh, if you're a first time applicant to NRC IRAP, you can expect to get maximum 100, 125. If you're, unless you're in a rural area, then you might be able to get a little bit more. But typically you're looking at around between 50 to 75,000 for your first project. Uh, eligible businesses, uh, funding is available for small, medium-sized Canadian businesses, fewer than 500 employees that are incorporated in Canada, uh, profit-oriented and focused on technology-driven innovation. Shred. So, Shred is the, the most lucrative R&D tax credit program in the world. Uh, it provides, and all these percentages, I'll just give you a quick, did I, did I create the slide? Ah, sorry. Uh, for those of you that want to know, in Ontario, there's three costs. Well, in Canada, there's three costs you can claim. You uh, under eligible expenditures here: labor, materials, and contractors, and third-party payments. Third-party payments are for research bodies that you pay into to get access to their IP. Not too many people access that, but it does happen. Labor and contractors have to be Canadian. Materials can be sourced from anywhere in the world. In Ontario, if you're a Canadian-owned private corp, just to put dollars to cents for every eligible shred salary dollar, you can expect. As a refund, so a total 65 cents for every dollar sent. As a refund, about 62 cents of that is fully refundable. If you're non-CCPC, that becomes half and becomes non-refundable, and about 8% of that becomes refund uh, only. So CCPC stands for Canadian Controlled Private Corporation. So anything other than that, so if you're publicly traded, if you're foreign owned, uh, then you are non-CCPC, and that is non-refundable for the most part. But great program. It's still at 30 33 cents, it's still the most lucrative in the world. Most are between 10 to 15% for R&D tax credits. The qualified companies must demonstrate that their work involves revolving tech, revol resolving technological uncertainties through systematic investigation or experimentation process. Uh, for all of these, you can apply on your own, but why you would want to hire an expert is to avoid audits and to your best chance for success. The interactive digital media tax credit. This is for products, must be either a video game or educational for children under 12. There's essentially two tax credits in Canada. The Shred is a tax credit and the digital media is a tax credit. They have one for each province. Eligibility criteria is a, a little different by province, but pretty much the same. You can receive up to 40% in government tax credits, refundable for eligible labor, marketing, and distribution expenses. With a caveat there, maximum $100,000 for marketing and distribution expenses. But it covers everything that Shred wouldn't if you were claiming Shred as well for the video game development. So it covers artists, it covers designers, it covers uh, storyboarders, all that sort of stuff that Shred doesn't cover. Um, oh, here, the eligible marketing and distribution expenses are capped at, oops, that should be $100,000. Sorry for that. So... One that's really easy to get, it's still open until March of 2025, it's the micro grant through CDAP. Now, there, there were two streams for CDAP, one for uh, $10,000 up to $100,000 loan, a $10,000 grant with a $100,000 loan. This is just a $2,400 micro grant to get your business online, increase online sales, adopt security software to protect your customers, improve your social media marketing and customer connections, or enhance the online user experience for your customers. It's three easy steps. 
to apply. Uh, that one's really easy to do. So some tips. Did I do it? Oh, I did it in 10 minutes. Perfect. Um, grant application tips. Most grants require your business to be incorporated for at least two years if you're looking to get anything other than a hiring grant. The caveat is every grant is different. You have to look at the different criteria. Some grants have income requirements that your business must meet. For example, IRAP. If you're in a dense area like Toronto, the rules, the, they'll be a little bit more strict with the rules, but typically they want to see at least $100,000 in revenue in one year, and they want to see at least two employees. When it comes to approval timing, grants typically require to, well, they do require you to be approved before starting the work. So when it comes to approval, or when it comes to grants, think about it this way. You must be granted permission before spending the money. So that's just an application tip. Uh, many hiring grants, you can do them on your own, can be completed in 30 to 60 minutes of work. Um, and you can search for applicable grants at the Government Innovation Portal through ICED right now. That's it. Questions? So if anybody has questions, you click on that little present icon in the bottom right-hand corner and either put it in the Q&A or in the chat. You're able to see those and everything yeah. is controlled by that little present in the right-hand corner or bottom right corner. So, so we've got the poll open, John. Um, yeah. And if you can see it, I'm not sure, but I'll tell you right I now we've got, it. okay, eight at uh, pre-revenue, three votes at uh, less than 100K and a couple of votes at more than 100K. Awesome. Love it. Um, yeah, it's great to know because, uh, and, and this is a great uh, uh, opportunity for me to talk about this. When you're pre-revenue, I know it sucks and it's difficult to get to revenue. And unfortunately, uh, I'm the bearer of bad news. The government does not like taking risks on pre-revenue for the most part. Um, that's why most of the grants that you're, that you're going to be eligible for are smaller type grants. And that's a problem in Canada. There is a huge disconnect between what the government sees as a startup and what an actual startup is. It's tough navigating the grant landscape at that point. I'm happy to have a discussion. If you're less than 100K in revenue, there are some grants that are available and also rules could be bent. But when, if you're thinking about applying for grants, the thing is whoever meets the most Whoever checks off the most boxes is going to have the highest chance of success, especially post-pandemic. For example, Can Export never used to be oversubscribed, always used to be always open, rolling applications. Post-pandemic, they're they have to close down early because they're oversubscribed. Most grant programs nowadays are oversubscribed. And so if you don't meet the base criteria, the chances of success are going to be very slim and it's not even worth it to even apply at that point. Another piece of advice or strategy that I can give away is reaching out to the funding body, establishing that connection. There, that's your best chance of success to establish a connection with someone there who can give you advice and tell you whether or not you're wasting your time. We have our so, first question. Yeah, if you're revenue generating, but the revenue includes professional services, will that impact thresholds? That's a great question. It won't. It's whatever is showing out on your income or your revenue when you're submitting that to the government. So it can be any type of revenue. When it comes to can export, they could ask. So a lot of times, and I, I, I haven't run into this problem, but they could ask it. If you're looking to expand, it's got to be based on what your revenue is for that specific thing. But I've had people apply without them asking that specific question, if that makes sense. So there is one, and I, I thought I'd put it in here, but I guess I didn't. There's one I'd just like to talk about real quick, a funding body that is phenomenal to work with. Um, and I can make an introduction to them, OCI, Ontario Centers of Innovation. They've got some great programs, collaborate to commercialize. If you're in the construction industry, they've got a bunch of great grants right now. They used to be called OCE for those that know it as OCE, Ontario Centers of Excellence. They've got some great vehicle grants. A collaborate to commercialize is a great one if you're going to collaborate with a university. That's a great one to, to apply for as well. And we just put your offer for a free eligibility assessment. You want to talk about what you do when people book um, you? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so I would say 50-50, bear of bad news, but what I do is I impart knowledge on you to enable you to, to kind of make, sh to help you succeed. So when you book that 30 minutes with me, 
I will walk you through a couple of websites. One is the Business Benefits Finder. You will create a profile. What you will do from there is any grants that align with kind of what you're looking to do or with what your business does, you'll email me no more than 10 links. We'll do a follow-up assessment and I'll go through those links with you and I'll explain to you whether or not it's worthwhile, whether or not it's open, whether or not you can do it on your own or whether or not you should get help to do it. So I help to enable you. I'm not a salesy, pushy person that is going to push you into working with me if it doesn't work. But that's the way I approach things when it comes to that. And that's what the eligibility assessment will do. So it should say a free 30-minute grant eligibility assessment with follow-up, but that's what it'll be. We got a few more questions coming up. Yeah, I Perfect. just posted that. I didn't have a proper description. From Ben, what's the environment like for research? I'm somewhat familiar with the NSF grant system in the U.S., but not sure how well Canadian equivalent might work. I'm not sure what you mean by the environment like for research. It probably you know, wants or? shred stuff because. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what the NSF grant is. I, I'll um, look it up. So let's answer the next one. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, then I'm going to mute my mic because they're doing something upstairs. We are a commercial HVAC and refrigeration business. Is there anything here that I could benefit from? Yeah. So unfortunately, there isn't much for the services industry. Uh, but the CDAP $2,400 micro grant would probably be your best bet to go after. Uh, there, the thing is, is grants come and go all the time. So follow me on LinkedIn. I, um, I post about new grants often. Actually, not very often. I should post about them more. But follow, follow me on LinkedIn and, and I can update you on, on certain ones that open. But unfortunately, the two industries that don't really benefit from a lot of grants specific for their industries are the service industry and sales industry. So uh, that those are two. So in the U.S., the NSF funds a big chunk of basic research, yeah. basic scientific research effort. Yeah. So in Canada, that would be shred. In Canada, that would be shred. That's the R&D tax credit. But there is also, I said here in Canada, That's Innovation an Science and Economic Development Canada, as well as NSERC. Uh, what is NSERC? What does NSERC? stand for again NSERC is natural sciences and engineering research council of canada i think that would align better with kind of nsf maybe does so i'll post the link in here uh, but yeah so they're talking about the cdap micro grant uh, in the chat is that still open yeah that's the micro grant that's not the ten thousand dollar grant that's the twenty four hundred dollar grant and it's very easy to do i actually talked about it um yeah it so I'll post a link in here, I'll grow your business online grant. So feel free. That's something you guys can do on your own. That's pretty straightforward. So I just posted the link in the chat as well. And what about, there's a website with a bunch of the Ontario or Canadian grants that you always refer to business grants, Ontario or something like that, you know? Yeah. Those? So there, this is the one. So this is one, if you're in Ontario, I would go over the Ontario business grants with you. And also, I would go over the uh, business benefits finder with you. That's the main one for Canada. And I'll post a link here. Uh, so that one is the one where you would create a profile and uh, we would talk. So uh, someone here says they're interested in applying for a grant through the Canadian Digital Adoption Program. How long does it take to get approved? I haven't applied for the micro grant, unfortunately. But I know that uh, the $10,000 grant was 30 to 60 days. So I'm guessing at the most, it'll be that 30 to 60 days. So if you've got questions, keep them coming in the chat yeah. or in the Q&A. And if you don't know where those are, hit that little present icon in the bottom right-hand corner, and you'll see all the options there where you yeah, can so see Yeah, so let me, I'll just show you guys uh, what that business benefits finder looks like just real quick. So. There's a bunch of questions you answer. This is the profile, then you save it. You can also sign in if you already have a profile. Right now they have 1,606 programs and services. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine questions that you fill in. And then it'll look like this. It'll be grants and funding, loans and capital investments, tax credits, wage subsidies and interns, and expert advice and partnering and collaboration and research and facilities. So there's a bunch of different ones that are broken out. You'll see that most of them are grants and funding, 664, but obviously it's gonna be tailored to your profile. So here are the types of questions and you can always play around with it as well once you fill them in, but those are your story filters.
pretty straightforward. And then the other one is the Ontario Business Grants. This one is not as intuitive, but it gives you an incentive type by industry, by purpose of funding organizations, major programs, by audience. Audience is a great one. So if you're Aboriginal or Indigenous, this is a good one to look for. Uh, Women-led, all those different kinds of things. So, John? You, oh, yeah. What was the site you were just on before this? I told people it was Ontario Business Grants, but I think it was something else. Well, that, that's the one I'm on right now, yeah. uh, Ontario Business Grants. But the last one is the Business Binder. Benefit, benefits Finder. Okay, I'll find it. Yeah. Oh, I, it's, I posted it in the chat. Uh, the I said one, innovation.I said. It would be right before your... Oh, okay. Your, I see it. It just yeah. didn't look the same when it came up. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So these are great questions. Uh, so again, guys, the biggest thing to note is that each grant body is separate. There also is one that I didn't cover uh, for AI, but it's a little bit more convoluted and complex as in if you're a startup, um, you have to have a customer... I'll give you an example, like bird construction, right? They would have to be the primary applicant and the funds would go through them. So um, that's, that's kind of it. And good sources for tech companies. Yeah, there's a bunch of different grants and, and things specific. So uh, there's grants for med tech. There's Ken Health, which does med tech. Bio, which does med tech. Uh, there's Agritech. So Omafra in Ontario does that. But it used to be called Growing Forward to the program. Now it's called, oh, SCAP, I can't remember what it stands for. Uh, sustainable something, Canadian Agricultural Partnership. So those are agri-tech type of things. And there's specific ones. like there. So just to give you an idea of the grant landscape, there is over 4,000 grants in Ontario. There's nothing for blockchain or Web3. There actually used to be an app. It's now down, but it used to be called grantr.app, G-R-A-N-T-R.app. And it used to give you all of the... So when it comes to blockchain and Web3, most of the grants were from the foundations, like the Ethereum Foundation, the Solana Foundation, those things like that. So you can still go to those specific websites. There's not a central repository that I know of that I found. Uh, if I do, I'll post about it. But no, there's really not much for blockchain Web3. But specifically, but Shred and IRAP will cover blockchain Web3 development as grants and tax credits. So that's one that you can always do. Shred and IRAP cover pretty much every industry when it comes to funding. So those are the two best ones if there's nothing specific for your industry. All right. It looks like a few years ago, the IRAP was talking about potentially doing something with blockchain, but doesn't look like it moved forward. No, the, well, they're not a specific stream. So as long as you're not just building a token, you're not just developing a token, which is easy to do. Any idiot can do it. If you're doing something that's really innovative with blockchain or Web3, then there is potential to get IRAP money for it. Appreciate the feedback, Ben. I wish all webinars yeah. I went to turned out to be as interesting and useful. Yeah, we wanted to do the presentation short, give you a bunch of information, and then answer as many yeah. questions as you can. Yeah, and, and this presentation will be provided to you afterwards too so that you have a look at it just because I know I went through it very quickly. Let us know if you have any other questions. We just got a couple of more minutes. At the end, I think when we're done, you'll see that offer again where you can click the link to book a meeting with John and give us some feedback for this event, which will help us give us more for the next one. We want to do more of these, but we want to make sure that we're adding value and delivering them as yeah. best we can. And one of the things people forget about Thread, it's a tax credit program, but the government gives you the money. Like if you're spending... If you have two developers or more, or you're doing technical or scientific research in any specific area, you should be talking to John about what money you're spending. Basically, yeah. if you're spending over $100,000 on research, you should be talking to John because you should be getting 50000 or more back on that, depending on how much you're doing. And the government will give you that cash and you can start rolling that forward. Yeah. And yeah, that's the good thing is like, it's an actual refund. You can go buy a new car, whatever you want with it. Only if 51% of shares of your company are owned by Canadians, Canadian people or whoever, or PRs. Uh, but it's still one of the best programs out there. The good thing about Shred, I call it, it's the bread and butter because it's recurring. You can claim it every year, uh, whereas grants come and go. And so um, a lot of times you might apply for it one year and then next year might be oversubscribed. You won't get it. With Shred, it's part of the tax act. So you're pretty. if you're doing the work, you're guranteed to get the money. And some asked questions here about your fees in general. 
working yeah, with so you? Fees range. Uh, so I've got an hourly rate. I do a flat fee or I can do contingency. Uh, and it ranges anywhere from 1% all the way up to 25% for the contingency. It all depends on how much you're getting back um, and how much work it is to do it. Uh, but typically, my contracts are general contracts that will just have a, a, a sliding, not a sliding scale, just like a matrix that wherever your grant falls under, that's where it's charged uh, for the contingency fee. So happy to have that conversation. Yeah. And if you're interested, you can book that free 30 minute call and talk about your specific scenario and what that would mean. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll, I'll display that one more time. Any yeah. last questions for anybody in the chat? I really appreciate you all showing up today. Cool. I would love feedback on what other types of information and events you, you want to see because we want to bring value to you. So thank you all for coming and we appreciate cool. this. Yeah. And appreciate the interaction. Thank you guys.